What's up guys, this is Tampa Tech and I get a question that pops up every now and then in my TV repair videos. Why aren't I using an ESR meter to check capacitors? Well, in short, this is my go-to multimeter. It checks everything. Uh, capacitors, resistors, diodes, transistors, AC volts, DC volts. I had this for 15 years and it still works great. Anytime the readings are really off and wacky is because the 9 volt battery is low. So I just pop off this back cover, put the new 9 volt battery in, and it works great for another six months until the battery goes low. I do have an ESR meter, and the ESR meter is great also. I'm not saying it's not great, but a lot of my viewers are just people that are trying to repair their living room, the broken living room TV. Or maybe they found a, found a TV in a dumpster or on the side of the road they want you know, fixed up. Well, you may not have an ESR meter. This meter runs between $50 to $100. If you're a technician, you most likely have an ESR meter. An ESR meter is an equivalent series resistance meter. It detects the resistance in a capacitor. This is an electrolytic capacitor. Electrolytic capacitors are mainly made of aluminum. Inside, there's dielectric material and a paper soaked with electrolytes, which can be an oil form or a gel form. If you take a microscope to that, then you'll notice that it is layered like this, electrolytic paper that's soaked with the gel or oil form, the electrolytes, the dielectric, and the cathode and anode. When the circuit is turned on with the capacitors in it, the capacitor will hold a charge, stabilizing the voltage and power in the circuit. Even when the capacitor is pulled from the circuit, it still holds a charge. Over time, five or six years down the road, the capacitor may dry out and the value of the capacitor will go down while the resistance goes up. If the capacitor is superheated, it would begin to swell and leak the electrolytes. The capacitance value will actually go down when the resistance value goes up. So that's what this meter reads. This meter reads capacitance level, the value of um, the capacitor, which is the um, this one is 3,300 microfarads. All right, so you have to pull this out of circuit to read the capacitance, the microfarads on this capacitor. The beauty about this meter is that you can read it in circuit, which is great. So it sends, um, right here it tells you, it sends a 100K, 100 kilohertz signal through the circuit. It lets you know the results of that capacitor in circuit, which is amazing. So you can really speed through checking all the capacitors without desoldering all the capacitors and soldering all back in. So there's a third way. So those are two ways to read a capacitor using a capacitor meter, capacitance meter, and an ESR meter, and your eyeballs. <laughs> yes, or your sense of touch actually. So you use your senses, that's the third way. This overheated and it popped. So if the capacitor looks like that, you don't even have to check it, just swap it out. It should look like this. This is a brand new capacitor. See how the difference is? This one's flat, and this one is right here, swollen. Now, that's the most common repair, is bad capacitors. Now, not every bad capacitor pops. Some bad capacitors may look like this one. See? This one looks fine, but it could be bad. So that's why you have to check it using an ESR meter or a capacitor meter. If you guys are interested, by the way, in any of these meters, go ahead and check out the links in the video description below. This one is uh, $50. It's pretty good. I, I had no problems with it. Uh, this one is about $100. This one's 15 years old. They have a newer model. Don't worry. <laughs> and uh, I highly recommend Fluke. Now with this meter, it has no backlight, but it does have auto ranging which is great and auto off and it has a protective circuit it has a fuse and a diode to protect protect its circuit when reading capacitors this also has a fuse and i believe a diode in here protecting its circuit but you always want to discharge the capacitors um, just in case you know you don't want to put any stress on these meters i just use these needle nose pliers hold it by the insulator part the wrapping of the capacitor so you don't get shocked you don't want to touch the metal just hold it by the insulated cap wrapper right here and then close just right there just grab them both legs like that so this has auto ranging and auto off as well and this actually has two power sources it has um, right here in the back you could put two AA batteries in here but I don't use the two AA batteries I don't like wasting batteries 
I use the power port. And the power port is a micro USB port. And I got this power bank. I think I got this for like eight bucks. And I put Velcro in the back right here. And just plug it in. And this lasts a very long time. Just turn it on. And now it has power from the power bank. And just press and hold this and it turns it on. This has a backlight, which is pretty cool. And it has auto ranging. I love auto ranging meters. It saves me time and from, I hate pushing buttons. So first thing I do when I turn on my ESR meter is set it to zero and do the zeroing. You just close these two leads together, like just like that and short them together and then press the zero button. Okay, just like that. Now. It should be ready to go. You don't have to do that with this meter and switch it to capacitor mode, which is right here. So that's gonna read the microfarads of the capacitor. This is gonna read the resistance of the capacitor, the ohms. 200 volt, 250 volts, 470 microfarads. Now you don't read the 250 voltage. That means two, up, to, up to 250 volts can pass through this capacitor before it overheats and pops or swells. And so we'll put my red lead on this side, my black lead on the stripe side. So anytime you see this stripe side with the negative symbol, that's the black lead. The black is always negative and the red is always the positive side. Here it is. And it is 450 microfarads. All right, and that's 470 microfarads. So if it was reading 10% lower than its value, which is 470 microfarads, then I would replace the capacitor. But since it's reading within the 10% uh, of its value, then uh, I would keep it. This is considered actually a decent uh, capacitor. But let's go ahead and read the ESR. So I'm gonna put my positive on this one and my negative on this side and look at it, it's reading a very low ohms resistance, 0 0.03. And it tells you right here, which is pretty cool. It says good cap, which means good capacitor with low ESR, low resistance. And it is, it's 0 .0, 0 0.05 the most. And you can also look at the chart. So we got 250 volts, all right, and the closest to 470 microfarads would be right here, 470, 250 volts, 0 0.3. And it's way below 0 0.3. It's actually 0 0.09. So is it definitely a good capacitor? So they're both, they, both meters say, hey, this is a good capacitor. This is a bad capacitor. This is a thousand microfarads. What is that, 10 volt? Yeah, I think it says 10 volt. You could look at it and physically it looks swollen. It looks popped, okay? So I would automatically change this out, you know, for another capacitor. I wouldn't even check it with my meter. I would just change it out. You know, same thing goes with resistors. Resistors look burned. If they look burned, replace them. If, if you see a transistor with a pinhole burned right through the transistor, replace it if your board is scorched and it looks burned up then replace the board yeah i'm getting a hundred so it's really really low this should be reading 1000 microfarads on this so let's put that there put that there and i am getting a very high ohms for capacitor so i'm getting high resistance for this capacitor 8.9 or nine ohms pr pretty much. It tells you right here, it says good if the capacitor is less than the value of 10 microfarads. Well, it's a thousand microfarads. It's not 10 microfarads. So it's telling you that it's bad. It's telling you right here that it's bad. It's telling you right here it's bad. If you look on this chart, let's look at 10 volts, a thousand microfarads. I should get no more, um, no higher than, this is worst case scenario, by the way. So if you get any higher than 0 0.12 ohms, then it is defective and it's 10 ohms. 
So it's definitely, definitely bad. And it's sending that 100 kilohertz signal right through this capacitor. And that's why you're getting this value. All right, so let's go ahead and read the uh, bad capacitors that are in this Y sustain board. I pulled this board from a Samsung plasma TV that had no power. And this is a Y sustain board right here that has a bad capacitor. So I would automatically switch this out and this one as well. So see, this one's actually pop two as well. And so anyhow, uh, let's go ahead and check these bad capacitors and see what kind of values you get in circuit and out of circuit. Let's flip it over. Before reading any capacitor in circuit or out of circuit, always discharge the capacitor just like that. 2.25 ohms. And it says good if the capacitor is less than 22 microfarads. Well, it's not. It's actually a 680 microfarads capacitor. So it is def it's saying, hey, it's definitely bad, without a doubt. You should always read your capacitors at a circuit using a capacitor meter like this one. Because it's actually it's reading the microfarads from the capacitor, the capacitance of the capacitor. And I put my black lead on the black and the red lead on the positive side and I'm getting a reading of looks like a 273 250 uh, looks like it's staying around 240 all right so let's go ahead and pull it and see if we get the same reading now usually if you're reading this capacitor near other capacitors you're gonna pick up the value of the other capacitors and you may ask, I like, why not, like, aren't you going to pick up the value of other capacitors using this meter? Well, this meter uses a 100 kilohertz sine wave signal running through that individual capacitor. And that's how you get this value on the screen. There we go. Got it out. So let's go ahead. And now I'm going to turn that off. Let's see if we get the same value. I'm guessing probably it's going to be slightly off. Put my black lead on this side, and we are getting a value of drum roll 290 microfarads. Now, let's go ahead and check the ESR meter and see if we get the same value. Okay, put it on a positive and this side, and it looks like we are getting 1.9. Looks like 1.9 ohms. So it is slightly off. So we're gonna read the middle one actually. It's 150 microfarads, 250 volt. Right there, I don't know if you can read that or not. See that? All right, circled it right there for you. And we're gonna discharge it. Let's discharge all three. One, two, three. Let's discharge the other ones as well. And now let's go ahead and read the value and see if it reads the 150 microfarads. I'm guessing it's probably not. See, I'm getting 800, 890, 927 microfarads. So it's way higher. If the capacitor was bad, it would be way lower than 150 microfarads. So always read the capacitor. When you're reading capacitor, it has to be within 10% of its value. This. The red goes to the plus side and the black goes to the negative side of the capacitor. And we are reading 0 0.008 ohms. Very, very low ESR. And it actually says it on the screen. Good cap with low ESR. So it's without a doubt a good capacitor. Even though on this it said it was reading really, really high. So guys, if you're interested in any of these meters that I've shown today, go ahead and click on the links in the video description below. And if you know anyone that's interested in electronics, go ahead and click on that share button below. And if you found this video informative or you like my TV repair playlist, go ahead and give me a big thumbs up. It lets me know that you guys are interested in videos like these. And go ahead and click on the subscribe button right here to subscribe for future how-to videos coming your way. And click on this video right here for my TV repair playlist. Later, guys.